Okay, so this is part three in the series about CD designs. I want to go ahead and start off with this Set Fire to Flames release, um, an Alien 8 recording. Um, it's a Montreal band with a whole bunch of members. Um, it's just a nice simple release. It's got the CD in the back and it's got a booklet in the front. But what I actually want to talk about are a handful of CDs that use translucence um, in the design. So, for example, this particular recording has color and nice prints on the outside and on the regular paper, but within the booklet, there's the use of transparent paper. So if you um, hold the sheet down, you can actually see through one page to the next page, which allows um, to kind of hide the images a little bit, and make them a little more mysterious, and then as you um, turn to the next page you get a clearer vision of each of these things and allows for you to layer things of course Molasses I just want to show this one really quick because um, it has the transparent cover so you can kind of see what's going on before you pull it out um, but the CD case itself doesn't have any transparency and I just like the uh, details on this though so I thought I might as well show it really quick um, these nice little uh, images and then some embossed uh, text on the inside. So it's a very stark uh, CD package um, and the transparent paper is really only used on the outermost case but it's just such a, a nice clean design that I, I thought I might as well show it. So another design that effectively uses a translucency is Modest Mouse's Building Nothing Out of Something. Um, it's a much more playful uh, use of it where the, the translucent cover is kind of like an architectural drawing. If you separate it from the rest of it, it just is a, a simple line drawing. And then you open it up and you see kind of this playful cutout um, style illustration um, for the front. And the same for the back if you flip it over onto the back. Um, there's another um, little illustration and it's the exact same type of thing. You lift the translucent paper, it's kind of this um, architectural drawing and then um, just nice little imagery on the inside. So I like this one. I mean it's this is a nice design but it and I could show a lot of designs that have translucent paper in them. There's, there's certainly many out there but it kind of leads me to this one that I want to talk about. But the one I really want to talk about is this uh, Cigarros release. Um, it's just, uh, the album itself, the music is, is gorgeous. So to be able to release a packaging that was as mysterious and uh, ethereal and as gorgeous as the uh, music is on the CD, I thought was a really nice combination. As you page through this, there's no text anywhere. The only indication of what the CD is, is the band's name. Um, that's it. Everything else is kind of this silvery printing on translucent paper. And depending on which angle you hold it at the light, you see pages through pages or parts of the print, or you can even see your fingers <laughs> shining through the back. Um, it's just a really um, gorgeous little booklet. Even the CD itself, um, this is gonna be hard to show, but but it's got white printing on the CD. You can see it right there. Um, so white on white, the plastic translucent hard case that goes around the CD jewel case, just this entire package is gorgeous. It, it's so much more interesting than the actual vinyl packaging. I wanna show this release from Mud Boy as well. It's actually a laser cut cover. So this is kind of unique. Normally you'd expect something like this to be die cut, but to actually have it laser cut is kind of unusual. Um, so if you look at this up close, you actually can see the paper slightly browning from the um, burning of the laser cutting, which is kind of cool. And then this uh, sleeve on the inside alters as you slide it around behind the laser cut. So it's um, just visually uh, pretty interesting really delicate you got to be kind of careful with this and there's there have been other bands of course that have done some laser cut stuff but this is just kind of an unusual one um, that i hadn't seen before 
Now I also have to talk about prints in the new generation Diamonds and Pearls. Uh, this release has a hologram on it, um, which is unusual. You don't see holograms much anymore. <laughs> of course, this was recorded a while back, but really cool 3D effect. You uh, turn the hologram left or right, and it really feels like you're rotating both around the person and that there's motion created. In fact, if I show you some details here, you can see his eyes opening and closing, hands moving. Um, it's uh, just a great um, hologram effect on this. I wish more people still did this. King Missile. There's a whole bunch of lenticular ones out there. I should have talked about lenticulars in a vinyl issue, but with the CDs, the cases often come with this um, prismed cover, and then the image inside would have two different images overlaid. Um, so every other line would be image number one or image number two, and then the, the lenses of that CD jewel case would allow your eyes to focus on one image or the other. So as you flip the jewel case um, back and forth, it flips back and forth between the two images. You don't see both of them at once um, like you would when you pull it out of the case. Um, and I'm going to show a bunch of these, but there's certainly um, a lot more than what I've got um, in my collection. But uh, these are all just uh, pretty cool. So this one's just <laughs> funny and bizarre. This tool release um, has the exact same setup, so it's the jewel case has those grooves in it, so they're kind of like these elongated lenses of sorts, um, and then multiple images um, printed inside, so it looks like the eyes are moving around. And this one's kind of cool though because um, this is the the main cover, but really you can swap these out, so. Um, you could have all sorts of different covers in here. So you can see this actually has a one, two, three, four, at least four different images here. Um, whereas the King Missile one only had two that it was going back and forth between. Um, if you hold it right, you can kind of see several of the images at the same time. Um, but with this detail up close, you can really see um, how that works. Really cool. And again, there's multiple images in this one. So if you pull this image out, and um, put one of the other images in. Um, this, this is all sorts of creepy and bizarre. I, don't, I have no idea what's going on here. Somebody's having a fit at a party um, and everybody's watching. Maybe one guy's getting up to help. Who knows what's about to happen here. Now I've shown this Bright Eyes Casadega release before. I showed the vinyl, of course, in the vinyl video, which had some similar pieces in it but it's just such a great design that I might as well show the CD as well. Um, especially since maybe you missed that video, <laughs> but this is a really cool design. It looks like there's nothing printed anywhere. And then there's this weird little lens that you pull out, this uh, decoder, which reveals all of the design of Jack Nipper's design that's on here. The spectral decoder is a little lenticular lens, so it reveals things in the exact same way that all of the other CDs I just showed um, show images. Except this time, um, the images are hidden within a bunch of static, so um, it's, the images are reversed um, in essence. So you can make them look black on white or white on black, um, depending on where it's positioned. So it ends up looking like a very gray cover, but if you get the decoder in the perfect spot, it reveals all sorts of just amazing detail and uh, uh, outstanding little illustrations. Just such a great release. I still dig this. I can show this in every video and I'd be happy. And it fits the concept of the Casadega album so well too. And then we've got David Byrne's release, Look Into the Eyeball. Um, another similar concept. Um, every other line reveals something. <clears throat> so his eyes are closed in one image and his eyes are open in the other image so um, the text uh, vibrates back and forth to being there and disappearing and his eyes open and close and kind of blink and if you do it just right you can almost get one eye to blink before the other one does <laughs> so he's winking but um <laughs> but just a really nice uh, visual effect craft work um, I don't even need to pull this one out. This um, just kind of does these cool patterns depending on which direction you hold it. Um, but it's uh, lots of weird little abstract sound wave looking things. It's just a, a really cool release. 
I mentioned uh, Arcade Fire's Neon Bible in a video before. Um, again, a lenticular. You move it back and forth and it looks like the neon lights show pages opening and closing. Uh, it's a really nice effect, of course. And then this is the release that also came with that little flip book. I mentioned flip books in a previous video. So if you uh, page through the flip book, it's kind of a, a similar thing. The pages are opening and closing, like a neon light. Uh, MIA uh, for her album Maya, another one, similar concept. Um, all the lines kind of cover her face. You tilt it and then you can see her face. Um, all the digital uh, sliders and all that kind of stuff that pop up um, at a different angle. The little gold bars that make up her name. MIA and gold bars. <laughs> I've just got so many of these, I could go on and on, but I actually want to switch to a different type of format here. This um, Minute Papillion or Minute Papillion, I'm not even sure which way you're supposed to pronounce it, but it's really cool because it's kind of like Mike Watt and the Minutemen. You know, we've always thought it was the Minutemen, and one day he said, well, it's like the Minute Men, because <laughs> um, this is cool. I mean, it's a little magnifying glass and this tiny, tiny, minute little typography that you have to use the magnifying glass to read. Um, and all the songs on this CD are only one minute long, 60 seconds long. So they're a minute long, but everything's really minute. Manamana for I Am The Fun Blame Monster. This is a great little flip book. So you just flip through the book and the text animates. I'll flip through this a couple times here. Um, you can see people playing their instruments, um, twirling around in a chair. Just this great little flip book, and apparently they're all, they were handmade, or at least this original set. I saw them in concert once and they signed it for me and they were telling me, yeah, this is one of the very original ones, you know, way back when. This is so cool that you have this. So I guess they just assembled this themselves in their living room or something. So kind of nice to have a copy of this. Kalima, uh, Serenades and Serenettes. Um, nice little sleeve here. Nice little fold-out accordion-style booklet. Oh, very nice. Got the CD inside here, but the interesting thing, in addition um, to where the CD goes, is this little twirly round disc. And you've probably seen these as a kid. You twirl the disc, the image on each side become one. So here it's this little person just drumming away on a little um, tin drum. Very very cool, very nice. Simple little toy, um, but a nice touch to include with the CD. The John Spencer Blues Explosion. I'm actually kind of disappointed in this one. It's, it's called Damage, and when I first saw this, I saw these massive staples going through the spine over here on the side. So what I thought was really cool at first was that you had to actually tear this off. I mean, these, look at this, the staples going right through his face. <laughs> I thought, I thought, oh, this is awesome. Do you have to actually destroy the CD case to get this open? You know, pull on it really hard and to get the staples out and actually tear the, uh, the case apart and obviously damaging the CD case. Um, it's a great concept and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what they originally wanted to do, but I'm sure um, they were told by people above them, no, no, people are going to be mad if the case gets destroyed. You got to be able to allow them to pull the CD out without destroying the case. So sure enough, it slides up from the top. Um, it makes sense, I understand why, but boy, it would have been cool if you had to actually damage the packaging just to get to the CD. That would have been a great touch. I get this tiny little bottle here. It's called a Unholy Triforce is the band. It's gonna be hard to read this label, but it says something like infinite loop of vintage Norwegian chrome tape containing 20 plus year old data recordings from oceanographic instruments. So it's it's this uh, infinite tape loop um, that uh, you'd have to pull out of the bottle and string onto a, a tape player and um, very, very unusual, very uh, conceptual, um, but pretty cool, super tiny. So that release, as well as this next one, are from Aris Apothecary uh, Records. Um, this one's pretty interesting. It's got this nice little paper, and looks like a wax seal kind of on it, that holds this box together. So this is the box. It's kind of got this great screen printing on the cover. 
And inside, there's uh, several different formats, which um, our apothecary is, is really known for. They like doing very unusual formats. So tapes, which they do a lot, um, and the CD in the top here, as well as this little scroll down on the bottom, which kind of gives you details about this specific release. Um, this is very typical from the label. They just do these really very unusual, very unique um, releases. Um, and the, the music, um, the content of these are also <laughs> definitely unusual and unique as well. Pretty cool. This one, uh, Caught in the Wake Forever, is pretty interesting. It's a little, it's a little wooden box. Um, you pop it open. Um, the CD is in here, but there's also a whole bunch of extra elements inside this envelope here. As you slide all these out, you get um, the information about the CD. It's a little kind of a business card style um, tiny card in here, a little Polaroid looking photograph, and then a couple cards in here that um, discuss the release, um, who was involved in it, etc. It's a nice little box set. And then this one here, Love Lies Crushing. Um, this one's also unique. It's another box set, uh, um, an actual wooden box. Um, you pop it open, there's feathers inside here. You gotta be a little cautious as you work with this, but there's feathers inside. Um, there's a couple CDs in here, as well as um, some other pages. This uh, card here just has the typical information on it. This one, um, it's kind of hard to see. Um, Avionium, I think this is called. Um, so there's this one CD that's got this cutout on the cover and it's glued on, so that's handmade. And then this other one, this is the Girl Echo Sons Veils, which is the actual uh, album. And then of course a booklet, which has some artwork and then some details about it. Um, just a great little package. Um, I think this one's a limited run too. I'm not, I can't remember how few of these there are. These little feathers are kind of a pain in the butt, but. Um, but I just realized this is probably getting close to 20 minutes again, so maybe I'll close this one up and uh, save the rest of the CDs for the last video. But uh, thanks for watching and subscribing.